since dawn in Peterhead, Europe's largest fishing port. But today there is little to look forward to. For Sandy McLemon, the skipper of the Rose Bloom, it's another day of frustration. One without fish, which ultimately means one without earnings. Like many local fishermen, Sandy and his vessel are currently grounded, unsure of what the coming months hold. Our grandfathers were fishermen, our father was a fisherman, uh, my, my uncles were fishermen, generations before us were always fishermen, so uh, it's what we've always wanted to do. Job's not easy, it's quite tough. Lots of, lots of different challenges, but uh, none more so than Brexit just now, I suppose. Last year, over £200 million of fish were landed in Peterhead, a record haul. This year, things are very different. Covid and the changing landscape post-Brexit have created the perfect storm. The industry faces an existential crisis. Over 90% of the UK fishing industry voted for Brexit with the promise of taking back control of UK waters. Many, though, have been blindsided by the immediate impact of leaving the European Union. The UK government initially promised to reclaim 80% of EU fish caught in UK waters. This has failed to materialise. British fishermen will only receive a maximum increase of 25% over the next five years. I think the, the whole UK fishing industry was disappointed because we uh, we didn't get the sea of opportunity that we that we thought there was going to be. You know, there was there was talk about increasing the fleet to catch the extra quota that we we would get, and here we are in February and we're speaking about possibly needing to decommission boats. You know, the the fleet is going to is going to shrink this year. That's not a sea of opportunity. Around three quarters of fish caught in Scotland are exported to the EU. But with COVID-19 forcing restaurants to close throughout Europe, large parts of that market have disappeared. This has forced the Peterhead auction to limit sales. If they allow too many fish to be caught and brought in for sale, it risks driving down prices. With less fish to catch, around a third of fishing vessels in Peter Head are currently grounded. Some days, no fish were landed at all. I'll send it to you. I'll show you a video. Do, do it. Jimmy and John are old friends and prominent figures in the Peter Head fishing industry. Both former skippers of their own vessels, they have close to a century of experience between them. That's a bad deal for Brexit. Jimmy is one of the few people in the fishing industry who remain confident that Brexit will be a success. No, John, I'm not taking that. You've just seen four days at Easterly Wind. The fleet haven't even gotten their quotas yet. That's scaremongering. You must stop us. It's not unusual for any day, any one day, to have no fish in Peterhead. It's not de considering there's a pandemic even though there's no demand. We're the best of pals, actually, but we always agree to disagree politically, because I'm in one, one camp and he's in the other, and, and I've, I remain optimistic and positive, uh, and he would like to, to, he would like to prove me wrong by saying Brexit was the wrong thing. OK, Kevin. For Jimmy, who now sells fish directly to local customers, Brexit is an opportunity lost. He believes fishermen were right to want to leave the EU, but they have been let down by the UK government. See you tomorrow. Yeah, have a good day. Cheers. I'll tell you why I'm frustrated, because everyone wants to blame me or blame every fisherman for Brexit. All I wanted was this not to happen, an empty harbour. The fishermen wanted a better allocation of the, the, the quota that swims around our coastline in the United Kingdom. And what is so wrong with asking for that? 
It's the Prime Minister signed up to a bad deal. It's simple. I'm not going to try and dress it up. I remember Theresa May saying, no deal is better than a bad deal. And I think we're in a situation on the fishing side where we have now got a bad deal. The Prime Minister may say, say different. For me, in my industry, it was a terrible deal. One of the biggest hurdles for many has been the crippling volume of paperwork and additional border checks. Graham Tallis is the owner of GT Seafoods, a fish processor based just a stone's throw from the Peterhead market. Specialising in whitefish, he predominantly exports to Europe. This used to be a seamless process. Today from the auction, uh, we, we purchased this monkfish. Uh, beautiful quality uh, monkfish. This will be for export to France. This will be going to France. Despite Brexit in part being a backlash against perceived EU bureaucracy, exporters in particular are now faced with complex and time-consuming systems. Just mountains, mountains more of paperwork, um, making sure every every kilo that we export is correct, every commodity code. So it's it's probably adding another two, two, three hours minimum onto our day, I would say, definitely. And this added burden has inevitably led to costly delays. With each truck often containing fish from five or six different companies, one mistake and the delays impact everyone's profit margin. I heard some real horror stories, you know, especially from the scallops and the prawns. You know, the, these things are two, three days, four day shelf life. Waiting two, three days, the shelf life is gone. And I've, I've heard that some customers had to take them back. So big losses, hundreds of thousands, I would say, per company. The bigger boys will probably do it and, and uh, live with it and will just have to lose the money. Smaller guys, I would say there's quite a few, if not really thinking about, is it worth this, you know? With the continued threat of delays and added expense, Graham was forced to take decisive action. We set up a company in Boulogne because we felt it would be easier, uh, rather than having uh, 10 or six or 10 different consignments of fish going to customers, we can export the fish to ourselves. So that means one set of paperwork, so it's saving us a lot of money in the long run. We'll look at it in the long term. UK-wide, the number of people employed by the fishing industry is relatively low, less than 0.1%. But in a community like Peterhead, it's often the main source of income. Here, like many fishing coastal towns, there are few other employment opportunities. 6,000 people are engaged directly and indirectly in the industry in Peterhead and the surrounding areas. With a population of only 19,000, the community is severely affected by threats to fishing. I'll put my glasses on for that. <laughs> While Clark is another fish processor selling mainly to the UK market, his staff are now working around 18 hours a week, down from 40 hours a week last year. At one point I had over 20 employees, currently we're down to seven, and that the, the levels of fish stay the same, then potentially you could be looking at losing 40 to 50% of your workload. It's staff, pay them off. And then there's your concern, because if everybody's the same and the industry contracts, the market becomes weak, and with a weak market, the vessels then disappear, and before you know it, Peterhead will become a garage. We're all integrated. You know, people say they don't work in the fish. No, but they make the living from the fish. UK fishing became the poster boy for Brexit, with Boris Johnson promising to take back control of British waters. For many, though, the fishing industry simply became a pawn in the wider negotiations with the EU. We just saw it as a complete sellout. You know, Heath sold us out going in, and it was obvious that Boris Johnston had now sold us out coming out because it was a political decision at the end of the day. 
it now leaves our industry in a perilous position and most of our key commercial species in terms of the haddock, the cod, the saith, we have significantly less to catch now than we did previously. We're not a big industry, but you know, we're coastally we're, a, we're an important industry. If we have to consolidate, then what you'll probably find is those with the deepest pockets will own the industry at the end of the day, and men are going to lose their jobs. The only certainty the fishing industry can look forward to this year is continued uncertainty. Uncertainty only exasperated by COVID-19. The fishing industry has faced challenges before. For many, the outcome of Brexit is just more disappointment in a long line of disappointments. For some, these are anxious times with no real certainty of what the future will bring. While others remain hopeful that UK fishing will bounce back and relationships with their continental customers can flourish. John, the point I'm trying to labour here is, you told me 32 years ago, that's it, it's finished. I remember clearly, oh, Jimmy says, that's it, we're finished. There's not a haddock in the North Sea. And I went home quivering in my boots, thinking, have I done the right thing investing my, all my life into this fishing industry? 32 years ago, every year since, we did well. Now, we're in a dip just now, and I'm confident that we will come out to the other side of it. got two sons myself uh, and I would like to see them going into the fishing uh, if they're keen to do it. It's going to be a real struggle but hey we are fighters you know the Scottish are fighters and we will fight our way through same as the fishermen, processors, strong people here so we have to be strong. One thing is clear the UK government has lost the trust of fishermen maybe forever.